Imagine this, you tell your AI, hey Claude, order me a pizza from Zomato. And instead of saying, I can't access this website, Claude does it for you. It actually orders a pizza, no plugins, no extensions, it directly talks to Zomato. Sounds like a magic, isn't it? Not really, that's not a magic, that's MCP, Model Context Protocol. And today I'll show you what it is, why it matters and how you can make Claude talk to Zomato all by yourself just with me for a few minutes and you can set up the Zomato server connected with Claude all by yourself. All right, let's break it down. What is MCP? MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. Think of it as a universal translator between your AI model and the world. Just like your phone connects to Wi-Fi to browse the internet, MCP connects your AI model like Claude or GPT to tools, databases or API. Without MCP, your model, AI model is like a super smart kid or a smart person that is locked in a room. It knows a lot but can't do much outside its wall. MCP opens that door and says, hey Claude or hey GPT model, meet the outside world. So MCP in general is like giving that smart person or that smart kid access to the door with keys that it can open the door, close the door whenever needed and connect to the outside world. It can talk, communicate with the outside world. Now you may think, why do we even need MCP? Here is why MCP is game changer. AI models are great at reasoning and conversations, but they do not have live access to your business data, your APIs or tools. In the past, we have been using plugins, custom APIs, but each one was different, messy and not scalable. MCP fixes that by giving every AI model a standard language, a standard way to talk to different systems safely. So whether it is Zomato, Notion, Jira, Salesforce, MongoDB, SharePoint, or any other applications, MCP makes it possible for any AI model to connect to any app without chaos or confusion. It's like giving your AI a universal remote control. Let's try something fun. So now let's make Claude talk to Zomato using MCP. For that, we'll follow a series of steps. You can follow along, pause the video in between and follow along with me if you want to do with me or you can watch it first and then try it out. Let me know in the comments if you face any problem. First, let's navigate to cloud.com slash downloads and we need to download cloud desktop. Okay, So with respect to your OS, your machine, you download it by clicking one of the options. For me, it's Windows. I'll click here. As soon as I click here, the download will start. So cloud setup exe download is it is downloading as soon as that get, gets downloaded you just need to install that it's click click next and install it i have already installed it once it's installed you can find it here and it will ask you for login with your account if you don't have account please create your account on cloud and then you can probably log in here i have i have an account and i am already it, it has taken my log logged in account so that's why it I see the welcome message and this is similar to your chat GPT if you're familiar with chat GPT or MS Microsoft Copilot similar to that it gives you a chat interface where you can query to the model and get the response so this is first step now we need to find clouds configuration file so for that what you can do is you can go you can locate that file either by searching with the name cloud underscore desktop underscore config dot json or you can type the app data url and search it if you are if you are within windows and if you are using mac os then simply search for this file and uh, go to that location click on edit that file and when you edit that file you have to provide the the mcp server information so you have to add the JSON. The, right now you see a blank JSON because I have not added any MCP tool in my cloud for now. So I'll just paste that. I'll have this pasted in the description so you can utilize the same information. I'll save it. Regarding the configuration, I'll show you one more thing, the, the config file. 
if you already have some MCP servers added, then you don't have to delete them. You can just add one more uh, additional details regarding the Zomato MCP server. Once you have config updated the config file, you just open, uh, you just close the Claude application and open it again. Make sure to close uh, close Claude completely, not just the window. Okay, you can you can just exit from from this application and then try it out. If it is not, and then you have to see here the Zomato MCP server should be showing up here along with the web search tool. If you have enabled web search tool, if not, then at least Zomato MCP server should be enabled. If you don't see that, you can try quitting this application again and relaunching it. Now we already have the configuration for uh, Zomato MCP server. And if you, if you, you have a toggle button, if you want to use, or if you don't want to use, you can just toggle it around. So, uh, those, those, M that MCP server will not be used. And you can see here, what are the methods or endpoints that are exposed at, as part of this MCP server. So what are the get all restaurants, uh, get menu item listing, all these get, create cart, create checkout, all this functionality, uh, is added and you have access to like Claude has access to all that as part of the MCP server. There's one more part. You need to do an authentication with Zomato. Let's say before that, I'll show you, I'll say, Hey, Claude, order me a pizza and let's see what happens. So based on this statement or this prompt, it should be able to identify what is the context, right? What we want and which tool uh, it has access to. So it, the closely matching tool was Zomato. So let me first check if you have any saved address in your Zomato because it needs to get our delivery location, right? So if you're doing this for the first time, you will need to authenticate your Zomato account. So you have to log into Zomato, use OAuth. Claude will use OAuth uh, authentication mechanism here. The first time if you use Claude uh, and connect, to connect to a Zomato server, you will have to open and authenticate with your personal account with your account whatever you use for on zomato right so once the authentication is done the server safely stores your token for all future use so let's continue the same pizza example it is requesting the addresses uh, so i will say okay allow once to give uh, if you don't want claude to ask you every time you can either allow always so that it will not ask and it will find uh, when whenever it is it want to find some information it will find and fetch that and proceed. But I'll say I, I want to keep that option with me because I want to see what exactly it is doing and want to provide the proper uh, access. Uh, it is trying to fetch my current address. I might have used the same email ID at multiple places in multiple applications. So it might have multiple address locations associated with my account. That's why it is trying to find that out. So maybe I can say I am currently in Mahadevpura. Use this as delivery location perfect i will use this location and then it is asking to search further it is getting the restaurants it's fetching the restaurant and you can see the method that is it's using get restaurants for keyword so it has given me the list of options then uh, it is asking my input so i will just say okay pizza stop okay so it's highly rated and all, all that information it is giving me. Um, then further, it is trying to fetch the menu items for that restaurant or for that cafe. And it has given me the options, recommended pizza options. I have to choose one. So maybe I can go with, let's say the first option. Okay. You can simply type one also, which size regular is fine so one margarita pizza regular for 340 rupees would you like to add anything extra and all that information it is asking nothing extra please proceed so it is it is creating my order and it want it to be added to the cart so it is asking me to allow so now it will create this order for me and it is giving me a quick summary here this is my total item total platform fee delivery charges and the total amount and the payment method it is asking and it is by default will use pay later payment method because we i don't we don't want to provide and it is not expecting any uh, payment related information card details or stuff like that so it will always proceed with pay later option so just confirm and i'll uh, complete the order and check it out for you 
So once we confirm, it will just go ahead and place an order for us on, on behalf and uh, the pay later option will be selected and the order will be placed on Zomato. So I really don't want to have this pizza right now, so I'm not proceeding further here. But this is how you can easily connect your MCP server and through chat you can place your order. Uh, what you have just witnessed is you have watched you have watched Claude pulling live data from Zomato, straight from Zomato, right? No browsing, no guessing work, direct API magic powered by MCP. You have just made your AI model talk to a real world application. In this case, it was Zomato. So now imagine connecting Claude to your company CRM, your automation platform, or even your email system all through MCP. This means we are stepping into a new world of agentic AI, where AI doesn't just talk, it acts. And the best part, it's open source, secure and developer friendly. So next time, if you see Claude doing something crazy smart, remember, it's probably MCP working behind the scene. If you found this video useful, smash that like button, drop a comment saying MCP and share this video with someone who still thinks AI can't connect to real world because the future isn't AI alone. It's AI connected through MCP. Thank you so much. See you in the next.